Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to Space Marine 2. So, for today's video, we are going to have a look at the Armoring Hall, which is available in the Operations and the Eternal War game modes. That's the PvE and the PvP game modes. Now, these game modes are available to you throughout the campaign, but I decided to wait until I'd finished the full campaign before touching them, so I will try and avoid any spoilers whatsoever. I do apologise if I accidentally slip with any of them, but I don't think we'll need to mention anything in terms of spoilers for the story. One thing to be aware of as well is that I messed up when recording this footage. I forgot to switch my audio input because I didn't have my headphones. <laughs> and yeah, so we, we have no background audio recorded on the actual footage. Um, luckily enough, we're just stood around on the battle barge. There's only a bit of kind of background noise in terms of like clanging and then a bit of music as well. So you're not missing out on too much. But yeah, it is pretty much just going to be me talking. Anyway, here we are. Please, uh, please forgive my Chaos Assault Marine. I am a member of the Black Legion. Death to the Cops Emperor. Anyway, let's take a look at the two different game modes before we head off to the Armoring Hall. Here we are on the flight deck. We need to head over to this terminal here in order to pick a mission. You have your two different game modes, Operation and Eternal War. There is obviously the campaign as well if you want to replay any of the missions. In Operations, you have six different missions and you also have Quick Match. You are introduced to these throughout the campaign, so you can start doing them. I think it's before the third mission, but I decided to wait. And I'm going to try and release them in conjunction with the episodes. So I believe it's episode three, or mission after mission three is when you get introduced to Inferno. So I'll probably release it as like episode 3.5, something like that. I'll try and do it in that kind of chronological order so we're not really missing out on anything so you can see what the other squads are up to before we progress with the story. But yeah, you have six different ones. But I do have to say the sixth one, Ballistic Engine, I don't remember hearing about that in the campaign. I don't remember the characters talking about it. Like, it could be that I just wasn't paying attention and missed it, but I just don't remember it being mentioned. Anyway, you have four different threat levels, which you can see at the top here. You have Threat Level Minimal, which is recommended for Level 1. You also have Average, Substantial, and Ruthless. For each of these threat levels, there is a recommended class level before you go in there. So again, with Minimal, it's threat levels, class level 1. So if you are a level 1 tactical marine, they would recommend going into Minimal. Average is level 5, Substantial is level 10, and Ruthless is level 15. Now, each of these threat levels come with different changes as well. So with Minimal, you've got Equipment Drops are Generous, Enemies are Moderately Dangerous, your second incap incapacitation is a mortal wound, and then the armory data is master crafted, which are your second level of weapons. With average, you've got reduced equipment drops, enemies are more challenging, your second incapacitation is a mortal wound, your armory data is master crafted again, and your medicaid stims are less effective so they don't heal as much. Substantial, again, equipment drops reduced, enemies are formidable, so they're even harder. Your first incapacitation inflicts a mortal wound. A mortal wound means you die if you go down again after that one. Your armory data is Artificer, which is the second level of weapon upgrades you can get. And then your Medicaid stims are less effective, again, so I think that's the same as the average. So quite a lot of different changes. And then with Ruthless, it gets even harder than that. So you have respawn time is increased, your enemies are deadly, your first incapacitation inflicts a mortal wound, your armory data is relic, so you get the top level of weapon upgrades, and your Medicaid stims are less effective again, so they heal less. So yeah, those are the differences between the four different difficulty levels. Then you also have your Eternal War, which is your PvP. You've got three different game modes, Seize Ground, Capture and Control, and Annihilation. And then you also have your Quick game as well. Oh, we don't want to switch that. Okay, there we go. We're in the, we're in the correct mode. I didn't want to switch over to PvP and accidentally get put into a game straight away. So, let's head to the Armoury. It's in the same place as where you usually go on the campaign for your Armoury. So you just have to walk up to the Magos. There we go, he'll uh, deploy his screens and you can interact with them. Sometimes he'll have a voice line, sometimes you won't. Okay, open up these screens. So, you have your main screen, you have your six different classes at the top. Here you can see my Assault Marine, you have your three different weapons, your main standard weapon, your secondary weapon, which is usually a pistol, and then your melee weapon, which um, all of these can change depending on your class. There's your six different classes, your Tactical, your Assault, your Vanguard, your Bulwark, the Sniper, and the Heavy. 
You can tell which ones I prefer playing as to which ones I've changed the colour scheme on. I am also a bit of a fan of Space Wolves as well. So, with your Tactical Marine, you get all three weapons available to you. You also have three different loadouts that you can pick as well. You can alter these loadouts and you can change them during the mission as well. Most missions will have a couple of different points in which you can change your loadout. You can pick different weapons for these loadouts as well. You don't have to use the, the ones, that, the, like the standard ones. But some of the classes will only have one weapon available to them in each slot, so you'll have to use those weapons. And then some classes... Oh, as you can see here, my tactical class is level 2. So I have done a mission or two with him. You can see his ability there on the right-hand side, which is Auspex Scan, which makes enemies vulnerable and re uh, reveals them. You also have an armor class of 3. And you can see with my assault, my assault marine here, doesn't have a primary weapon, but he does have a pistol, and he has three different melee weapons available to him. He's got the Thunder Hammer, and a weapon that I didn't see in the campaign, so I just didn't even know it existed, the Power Fist. It's pretty cool, I quite like it, but I do have to say that the, um, the Chain Sword and my Thunder Hammer are my favourite. He does have two different pistols available as well, he's also got the Heavy Bolt Pistol. And there's his jump pack ability, which I really, really like. Jumping in the air and slamming down with all the different abilities you can get. You can also dash with it as well, you don't have to jump. And your armor class as well being three, which means you have three armor bars. Here's the Vanguard class. Again, primary weapon, secondary weapon, and a melee. His primary weapon, he's only got three. He's more of an SMG, kind of a smaller weapon-based class. He does deal quite a lot of damage when he's up close. He does have a pistol as well. It's like the standard bolt pistol, and he also has melee weapon, which is the combat knife or the chainsword. His ability is the grapple launcher, which grapples onto an enemy, and then you can also do a double front kick, something I think is an extra damage ability when you're zipping over to them, and your armor class is two. Here you have your bulwark, who doesn't have a primary weapon, but he does have a secondary weapon pistol, which is either the plasma pistol or the bolt pistol, and he has a melee weapon, which is either the power sword, the power fist, or the chain sword. Power sword is one of my favourite weapons, it's amazing. But he does also have, his ability is the chapter banner, which places a banner down and regenerates you and your squad mates armour in a small radius around the banner, so make sure that you stood in, inside it when you uh, see it down. And then your armor class is three, but the biggest thing about the Bulwark is that he has a shield, an actual full-on shield. Now, I haven't used this yet, and I'm going to have to run some tests on it before I can properly tell you how it works, but I would imagine that instead of being able to parry, that you can just block with it. So, yeah, and I think it probably has a better block as well. Okay, so, your Sniper, he has access to the three main weapons as well, the three weapons as well, so the main weapon, secondary pistol, and the... Melee, so with his main weapons you can have a rifle, you can also use a sniper rifle and an SMG as well, but he also has the Las Fusil, which is my personal favourite, does a truckload of damage. You have one pistol, which is the bolt pistol, and you can only use the combat knife as well. Now I really like the sniper, because he has the camo cloak ability, which turns him invisible. You can use it right next to a group of enemies, and they will just turn away and walk to somebody else. And your next attack, when you're camo cloaked, will deal extra damage, but it will drop your cloak. His armor class is level 2. I really like using the camo cloak with the sniper rifle because it does a truckload of damage to the special monsters. You can pretty much one-shot some of the Tyranid, like, big monsters with it. It's amazing. It certainly makes dealing with the larger enemies and the more special enemy types a lot easier than just pumping hundreds of rounds into them. And finally, we have our Heavy. Now, I really like the Heavy as well because he is all around pumping as many rounds into enemies as possible. He has a main heavy weapon or primary heavy weapon. As you can see the heavy plasma incinerator, the multi-melter and the heavy bolter. He also has access to a pistol, which is either the bolt pistol or the plasma pistol, but he doesn't have access to a melee weapon. And the reason why is because he is always carrying his main weapon. You can't put it down if you switch to the pistol, you're still holding it in one hand. So you're still holding your primary weapon in one hand. And then his ability is Iron Halo, which deploys a dome shield in front of your character when you're playing a heavy, but it moves around with you, and then you can also use it to... Your teammates can stand inside it as well, and it will protect them. It protects against ranged attacks, has a certain amount of charge, and if you deactivate the ability before the charge runs out, it does refund some of the cooldown cost of it, which I really like. And then his armor class is level 3, so he gets 3 bars of armor. And those are your six classes. 
Right, so let's take a look at perks. So each class comes with a set of different perks. You unlock a new perk every time you level up, but you do have to spend the resources gained throughout missions to buy them. And they also have some other level of functionality, which I'm not 100% sure of. If something, that the advice or the, the, the tutorial that it gives you when you first enter the armoring hall tells you something about the columns and only one of them being active at a time. So I'm going to have to um, level up a couple of these characters to a higher level just to see what that meant if it does change the functionality. My assumption at the minute is that it gives you all of them. There are a few different types of perks as well. You have perks based around your damage, perks based around your team. You also have core perks, which are based around your ability, depending on which class you're playing. And then you also have your kind of top level perks as well, which really kind of drastically change the play style. I say drastically. As you can see here with our tactical, we're only level two, so we've only unlocked one perk. There are several different ones. Your team one there, giving your team less recoil. Your core perks being around the aspect scan and changing how it works in certain ways and how it interacts with certain enemies. And then your top level perks. All these signature perks. Kind of they don't drastically change. They they make some quite they make some changes to the way your ability works, but not to the point where you'd either stop using it or it would completely change its functionality. It's more just here's a cool extra little feature that your ability does now and stuff like that. So being able to one-shot some of the Majoris and Extremis enemies when they are scanned with an Auspex and you headshot them. Anyway, let's look at the weapons and their upgrades. So as you can see here with my Chainsword, I have master class, uh, master crafted it. You do start with a standard one and then with the master crafted, there are certain ways in order to do it. As you earn experience with your weapon, as you're using it, you will level it up to max. You'll hit the maximum experience and then it will unlock a mastery point for it. And then you'll be able to purchase the next level. So purchasing master crafted does require armory data, which you'll find throughout the campaign. So here's your armory data. I have three of the master crafted ones, and then we'll have to find the next level ones in the higher difficulties. So you use the armory data to unlock the access to those master crafted weapons, and then you have to spend resource to purchase them as well. Now they do have different perks as well. Most of them are just bog standard kind of damage increases and block and stuff like that. Some of them are quite good, but um, some of them do seem to be very similar between the different types of weapons. And all of this is shared across all of your classes as well. Oh, forgot to change it back. Now there are differences between the two types of Master Crafted. So the Master Crafted Alpha, so I'll just uh, switch back to the standard issue. So the standard issue is just kind of five for damage, four for speed, and then four for cleavability as well. And then obviously you have your defense and your specialization, which um, specialization is single target versus multi-target. And then defense is your parrying. When you buy one of the Master Crafted, it does change some of those stats. So the Master Crafted Alpha just is a flat increase to damage, whereas the Master Crafted Beta gives you less damage but more cleaving ability. But it does also change your defense to not have a perfect parry window so you can only block or dodge with it. But yeah, these are shared across all of your classes as well. It's the same with the pistols. As you can see, I've also master I've also mastered one of the um the, the, the standard level of pistols, so I now have alpha. I actually have mastered the master crafted level as well so i have a mastery had a mastery point available i believe i've spent it on one of the upgrades for the perks um so i could if when i when i do the higher level difficulties so if when i do the third difficulty level if i gain one of the armory datas in that i'll be able to unlock the next level which will unlock even more cool skins for the weapons but yeah you only have to do it once with weapons so as you can see here my pistol, Master Crafted, it's exactly the same. I have the same level of XP on it and stuff like that. So you don't have to grind each weapon's experience and Master Craft every single one of them with every class. Once you've done it on one class, it's available to every one of them. Oh, forgot to change the skin back. Got to have those nice skins. And there you can see there we have these next two, which look amazing. I can't wait to unlock those. I hope their stats are even better than they are before. We do have to do a bit of farming when it comes to the armory data as well. So there's your weapons, and they are shared between those two classes. Well, they're shared between all the classes that, that use those weapons. Apologies, I just had a cup of tea and I'm a little bit gassy right now. Trying to burp quietly is not an easy thing to do. 
Anyway, finally, let's look at changing our armor set and the color scheme. So first off, you have your armor set. These are all the different armor sets that you can unlock in their entirety throughout playing the game. Some of them are DLC based and some of them obviously are quite high level, so they will require a bit of grinding. And at the bottom, you have four different custom armor sets that you can make so you don't have to wear a full complete armor set as you can see here I can edit all the different ones I can take pieces from one arm one armor set and add them with pieces from another armor set so that's I quite like that feature you can kind of craft your own there are some other ones as well you've got the ultramarines helmet brazen console you've got lieutenant helmet the death watch helmet the black templars helmet there's loads of different options and I hope they bring even more and it's the same with your shoulder pads as well. You can change different shoulder pads there. So I have unlocked the Mark X Tacticus for pretty much most of the Assault Marines so far. I think there's only one piece I'm missing, which is the backpack. Or the shoulder parts of the backpack. Yeah, that's the one piece I'm missing. So hopefully when I hit level 9, I should unlock that. The two skulls on top. It looks pretty awesome, I'm not going to lie. And I believe once you highlight the different types of uh, different types of armor sets, it will tell you what you need to do in order to unlock them. At least I think it's around that time. It's around that anyway. Um, it'll tell you, say, how many missions you have to complete to unlock it. Anyway, so, to change the colours of your armour set, you obviously go to the top where it says armour sets and Astartes chapters. You click on Astartes chapters and it will, uh, obviously you can see all the different ones you've got available to you. There are more than just these as well. There are some others you can unlock. So you can see at the bottom here I've got two custom ones. One of them is the Alpha Marines. They are... Is it Alpha? Alpha Legion, sorry, which is another... Heretic Astartes Legion, and I also have Black Legion, which is my favourite one. Well, one of my favourites. I've got too many favourite chapters and legions that I like having, so I'm going to have many different colour schemes. In order to see all of the different colour schemes available, or all of the different chapters that you can have, you need to click on Heraldry, which will take you to this screen. You've then got all of your different ones. Um, to unlock these, you do have to purchase the decals for the shoulders and the arms and the legs and stuff like that you also have to have to unlock the color schemes as well and then you can obviously just select which legion or which chapter you want to get the color scheme and decals for and then you have to purchase them with the resources at the top you've got four different items or four different tabs the second tab is your heretic astartes there you go black legion and alpha legion i've unlocked both of those already the next one i want to go for is the night lords because they are amazing and I really hope they bring out some more thematic armor sets for those Heretic Legions, because I really would love to play a Corn Berserker-style Assault Marine. I think that would just be amazing with the big horn helmet that they wear. And here you have your Ultramarines tab, which have all of the different chapters of the Ultramarines, which are the most recent versions of 40k. You also have some of the Lost Legions as well, or the Legions that have an unknown founding, so either they're... Primax are dead, or they've something's happened to them throughout the story. And you can customize each armor piece as well. You can set custom rules for your armor set, so you can change all the different colors of them. You can change the colors of just the badge on the front. You can change what badges on each shoulder pad. So you could take a whole mishmash of different badges and colors from all different legions and just splosh them all together if you really wanted to. If anyone's been paying attention to any of the footage or footage and content coming out on TikTok and YouTube from the release of Space Marine 2, you might have seen the Crayon Marines, because I definitely have, and they're hilarious. They have got literally every color available to them. <laughs> I love it, I think it's funny. And I'm, uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to changing some of these up. Here you can see all the different custom rules you can make, so you can change some of the decals on your knee pads. I mean, you're spending 90% of the game looking over the shoulder of your character as you're playing, so you can't even see the knee pads apart from the loading in and the ending screen when you're sat on the dropship coming back, but it's there if you want it. And that is the Armoring Hall. That's pretty much everything there is to it. And yeah... We'll probably have a look at the upgrades that you can get at the end of a mission, and I'll probably take you through that leveling up and customization part when you're finished and you've, you've reached a new level with a character. But for now, I will end the video here, so thank you everybody for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope it's been educational, and I will catch you in the next video.